It's the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Phil Delso. I was here about a year ago. And it is wonderful to be with you again. And to see a number of people that I recognize. And I do have a few names. Not all the names, but a few names. And uh, you can remember mine. I'm Pastor Phil. So that one is easy. All right? Uh, when I was uh, getting ready to leave, I had another senior citizen who really, really wanted to come with me. I'm going to have you start running the video, please. And uh, this is a video of a friend that really, really wanted to come with me. And uh, his name is Chevy. He is my disciple. And uh, he is my disciple because everywhere that I go, he wants to go. And everything that I do, he wants to do. And right now we are at Victoria Park. That's my granddaughter with me. And he is going around and around the monument. And why is he going around the monument? Because the master said, go around the monument. Because his greatest pleasure is to please the master. So, if you ask him, well, why are you going around the monument? He would say, because my master. Now, when he walks on the same side twice, it's because I'm giving him a command. He didn't miss, just so you understand. And uh, I just put together this little video so that you can see what it is to be a disciple, a follower, you see? Because everywhere that I go, he wants to go. And everything that I do, he wants to do. Now some people ask, well, how did you get him or teach him? That is my finger, by the way, is the figure of my grandson who is holding the phone, the camera phone, and it, the sun is very bright, and so you can hardly see, but he did a great job. Now how in the world did the dog know to sit there? Because you see, he simply wants to please his master. And so he was not trained with treats, he was just trained with love, you see? Because he wants to please his master. That, by the way, is Queen Victoria's Lion. This is Victoria Park, and up on top is the uh, figure of uh, Queen Victoria. Now, I want to tell you that Chevy is a senior citizen. You know that uh, he, if he is 10 years old, in, in calendar years, he is at least 70 as far as uh, people years, you see? in terms of his aging. And uh, I want to tell you that even though he is 70, his focus has not changed. Before he became a senior, what was his focus? To please the master. And his focus now is to please the master. All right? I'm going to ask you to just stop right there. There's more if you want to uh, see it. We will do a uh, rerun after the service and we will charge admission. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I want to celebrate with you the joy of recognizing God's faithfulness during your 65 plus years of the journey on earth. But you know that whatever time we have on earth is just a speck compared to the eternity that stretches before us. Amen? Amen. We know that. And so when we are uh, li living this life, could we have the PowerPoint up, please? Hello? Okay. <laughs> just checking. And uh, so 
we understand that it is this life in which we are preparing for the next life. And that life is so much bigger, so much longer, so much more beautiful. And I'm looking forward to it. There are certain days when, you know, your body doesn't want to do what you would want it to do. Or if it does, it makes you creak and groan a little bit. How was it this morning? Moving. So, Lord, help. <laughs> Somebody gave me one of these beautiful little packages. I don't know what they were thinking. Do you think I'm a senior too? <laughs> Well, I want you to know that I am 22, and 23, and 24, and so are you all. I'm on this journey of life, and we uh, celebrate every stage of life. Now, I suspect that uh, Pastor Mercha has been introducing uh, this to you, and maybe Pastor Glenn, some of the principles of the way of Jesus. We're not going to spend any time uh, with this, uh, I know that uh, Pastor Murchis said I can preach until everybody is 65, <laughs> but I don't think we'll do that. So next slide, please. Next slide. And uh, we are going to focus a little bit on the first saying. I have begun following Jesus. I have begun following Jesus. That's the essence of it, you see. And depending on the spirit of Jesus in my journey, where would we be without the presence of the Lord Jesus by His Spirit in our lives even right now? God who is at work in such marvelous ways. Next slide, please. Next slide. Now, as uh, Pastor Mercha invited me and said, oh, we're celebrating those who are retiring. The Lord gave me this verse that's found in John chapter 6 right away. Simon Peter asked, uh, answered him, and this was when the Lord Jesus said, Will you leave me as well? And Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. So now that you reach 65, what are you going to do? Change masters? Change leaders? Change direction? Does that make sense? No. no! In fact, the best is still in front if you keep your eye fixed on Jesus. To whom shall we go? For you alone have the words of eternal life. Now you, live, you know that we live in a world, in a country which seems to have lost its bearings. But don't be shaken by that because others will come to you because you know where you're going and you have stability and strength because your life is grounded in Jesus and your master will never fail you. We have the words of the Apostle Paul as he is writing to Timothy in the last letter that we have from him. And you can see his perspective as he is uh, speaking about uh, his passing from this life to the next. And you'll see that the Apostle Paul is in no way shaken by the uh, reality that uh, lies before him. I am already being poured out like a drink offering, he says. And the time has come for my departure. Now we're ta not talking about departure here. We're still on several train, uh, train stations before our destination. But he says, I have fought the good fight. Can you say, I have fought the good fight? Yes. You can say, I am fighting the good fight. Still. Now I may need to take a nap in the afternoon. But I'm still fighting the good fight. I have finished the race. Yes, I have finished the race as far as I have come. But there is still more before me. Or so whether you're young like this fellow, or young like me, <laughs> I have finished the race as far as the Lord has taken me. And I have kept the faith. And let me say it's been a joy to be here and to hear all the 
singing. That's a gift that God has given us that expresses that faith, that confidence, that in a world filled with darkness and uncertainty, we have a song. We are like the Apostle Paul, who with Silas was in a prison in Philippi, and at midnight, after being beaten, after being in stocks holding him, and even in the midst of an earthquake, he is confident, singing glory to God. Why? Because his faith is secure. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. So don't give up now. Don't give up now. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearing. So that includes us all, even the little children that we lost to go downstairs. Pray a blessing on them even right now, right? That they will hear the voice of Jesus. So we are following Jesus. Next slide, next slide please, you see. And we find our identity and our purpose in following our Lord. Just as surely as those little ducklings are learning who they are by following the mother duck, you see. Your identity, my identity, is fixed in Jesus. Not how good we look. Not how bad we look. Not how smart we are. Not how rich we are. But it is fixed in Jesus. Because that's the only certainty. Next slide. And so we learn to fix our eye on Jesus. Now you met Chevy already. And I want to tell you that if Chevy were here, he wouldn't be just wandering anywhere. He would have come and made his way maybe on the stage, maybe right there, but he would keep his eye fixed on his master. You see? And so we are reminded in Scripture repeatedly to keep our eye fixed on Jesus. Not as strangers, but as those who love, are in love with the Master. Now you'll remember that in John chapter 21, it is the risen Christ who reinstates Peter by saying to him three times, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter is having a little trouble keeping his focus. After this little interview, he, they are walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And as Peter and the Lord Jesus are speaking, Peter turns around and looks and he sees the apostle whom Jesus loved, that is John. And Peter says, and what about him? <laughs> and Jesus says, never mind him. You must follow me. We lead our lives by keeping our eye fixed on Jesus, whether or not we are pre-65 or post-65. You see, we are not following some fixed destination. We are following a person, a leader. We are following the living God, the pilgrim God, who leads his people forward, not only through this life, but for eternity. Eternity is not going to be boring. So if you are hoping for a cloud and a harp, think again. It's going to be a lot more exciting than that. Now, some of them will say, well, how in the world do you know that? Well, there are a few clues in Scripture. We don't have a lot of time for that. Uh, but let me also make it clear that every one of us that was born started off in the womb, right? And so what do you imagine we're thinking, what the baby was thinking in the womb? Well, boy, this is all that there is. It's awfully dark. It's warm. But it's all that there is. And guess what? When the baby is born, boom, it is born into a world of incredible diversity and beauty, of challenges.
challenges, of hopes, of dreams beyond the imagining of that unborn baby. And so when we burst forth into our next life, it will be even more glorious. Imagine that. So no, let's keep moving a little bit. And in the same passage in John chapter 21, you'll know that the Lord Jesus, <laughs> as he is reinstating Peter, says to him these words, I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and you went where you wanted. But when you are, are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Anybody recognize that, identify with those words? My mom is now 96. She is still very active mentally, but I can tell you that these words are very true. Somebody else dresses her, and she can't go any place unless someone else actually helps her to go. But then look how the Lord Jesus Continues In verse 19, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, and here it is again, follow me. Keep your focus on Jesus. That's how we get safe home. No other way. So whether or not you retired from a particular job or career, that's not what makes your identity. That's not what makes you secure. Uh, I think many of you will know that on June the 30th, I finished my time. I retired from my role as president of EMCC. And I don't know how many people ask, well, what are you going to do now that you retire? What are you going to do now? I said, I'm going to do what you do. You see, because what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? I said, I'm going to do what I've done every day, which is follow Jesus. Amen. Nothing has changed. I am still keeping my eye on the Master. See? And remember that for you, whether you are not your pre or post 65, this is the first day of the rest of your life. So what are you going to do? Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Amen. <laughs> now, next slide. Now, maybe you can't see these words, but here <clears throat> it says, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. And through the ages... Followers of Jesus have grabbed the wrong end of this verse. So we ha have instituted something that we call Lent, a period in the calendar year, in the church year, where we deny ourselves. Because somehow that's going to make us more holy. And you see, the emphasis is not on denying, and it is not even on taking up your cross, because taking up the cross is not about the crucifixion. It is about the road to the crucifixion. It is about the shame that's involved. Now, you can take this passage, Luke 9, 23 to 27, and you'll see that that's actually the emphasis because the Lord Jesus makes a point of saying, if anyone is ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of them when the Son of Man comes, you see. But let's understand that when I got married, I did not say, oh, think about all the women I have to deny myself now, right? That was not my thought on my wedding day. What were my thoughts? My thoughts were, I am being married to this beautiful bride, you see? And so, here is a mistake that we make very often. We focus on denying ourselves, we worry about what others think of us, that's the shame part, instead of keeping our eye fixed on Jesus. So let me tell you that if Chevy uh, were coming with me this morning, wouldn't matter how much food, how much water, how many treats I set out, he would leave them all behind 
and he would rather come with me. And in his mind, he isn't saying, oh, think of the great sacrifice which I've made in leaving behind the food and the water and the treats. Because you see, his life is wrapped up in the master. So the focus here is not on denying yourself. Do you deny yourself? Yes. Because we make a good choice, the right choice, the best choice. And we don't worry about the shame. And is there shame in following Jesus? Well, you know that in this culture in which we live, it can be a tough thing to follow Jesus. But you keep your eye fixed on Jesus because there is no one else to whom we can go. Now, I want you to go to the next slide, please. Now, anybody recognize what this is? Any of you seniors want to go out? We're going to have this activity this afternoon. Okay? And uh, you can see that this is a uh, climbing wall, and there are all these hand holes. And I want to say that sometimes as followers of Jesus, we actually get our eyes off of Jesus, and we focus on the hand holes. Sometimes, you see, we even focus on the Bible rather than on Jesus, right? Is the Bible important? Yeah, absolutely. Is the Word of God? Yes. But our focus must be on Jesus because we are destined to become like Jesus, right? And sometimes we focus on holiness, godliness. Are those good? Yes. But how do we become holy? How do we become godly? By focusing on godliness or holiness? No, by focusing on Jesus. Let me tell you, if you are climbing a wall and you focus on a handhold, what's going to happen? If you fix it, if you get stuck, you will get stuck. Because the handhold is not our destination, is not our goal. Next slide. Another little different take on it. You'll see all the stepping stones. What happens if you fixate on the stepping stones? You trip. You trip. You fall. You get stuck. You got to focus on where you're going, right? So, is it important to be godly? Yes. Is it important to be loving? Yes. Is it important to be faithful? Yes. But our focus is not on those things. We look at those things long enough to recognize them as handholds, as stepping stones. And then we keep moving, keeping our eye fixed on Jesus. Let me tell you, my dog is a really good example. Because yes, he knows a number of commands and he knows uh, a number of things that he's been taught he is to do. But for him, life was really simple. Really simple. Whatever my master wants, that's what I do. You see? So sometimes we have made our life in Jesus really complicated and really impersonal. So we do all the right things, but we have lost sight of the joy of living in relationship with Jesus. Is it good to be in the fellowship of God's people on the Sunday morning? Yes. But if you think this is what life in Jesus is about, again, you have dropped your eyes. Look higher. Look higher. We are destined to become like Jesus. So, one more thought on this. And this is about making eye contact. Making eye contact. Pastor Merchant. I don't know if you saw what, what Pastor Merchant did when I called his name. Did you see what he did? No? Brian. He was already doing it, but you see? <laughs> you see? What we do is when somebody calls our name, we turn to them and we look. Sometimes when we think about following Jesus, we think we are following his feet, or his uh, role or something. 
but it is really about making eye contact with the Lord. You see? Now, you have been children, or you have children, or grandchildren. And you know that sometimes, when a child is doing something that they should not be doing, all you need to do is say their name, have them make eye contact, and, oh, they correct themselves, right? And let's understand that we are called into that kind of relationship with the Lord about making eye contact. I have up on screen Luke 22, 61. Luke is the only one who mentions this in what transpired when, the, when Peter denied the Lord three times. We read in verse 61, the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. They made eye contact. And that's what broke Peter's heart. They made eye contact. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord and spoke to him before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went out, out, went outside and wept bitterly. And I'm so glad that there was a subsequent meeting in which there was eye contact, in which there was a restoration of the relationship. But let's understand that when we get in trouble as believers is when we have stopped making eye contact with the Lord. And you say, oh, I don't understand that. Well, we're talking about doing this is in the spiritual realm. We understand about what it is to be living our lives openly before the Lord and what it is when we are in fact avoiding thinking or looking at the Lord, right? So when you're having that nice family squabble, you know when you are fighting with your husband or wife, Tell me, are you looking at Jesus? What would happen if you just stopped for a moment and lifted your eyes and said, Lord, <laughs> I want to honor you even in this. You think that that conversation might change? Yes, it will. Now, I'll give you the reference here to look at. We're not going to do anything with it this morning because even though Pastor Murcha said I could preach until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Psalm 27. Look at verses 8 and 9. And you'll see there that the psalmist talks about seeking the face of the Lord. And you may say, well, that's not eye contact. Well, pardon me. If you are seeking someone's face, what are you doing? Looking at their left ear? At their chin? The bald spot on their head? What are you doing? You're making eye contact. Seeking the Lord's face is about making eye contact with the Lord. So, when we are following Jesus, we fix our eye on Jesus, we make eye contact with Jesus. And one more thing. Next slide. We need to understand that we have the privilege, the honor, the responsibility of looking at others through the eyes of Jesus. You see, when the Apostle Paul came to the Lord, there was a transformation in how he looked at others. You all know 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. But look at the verse just before, that's up on screen. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though once we regret, regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. In other words, Paul understood that now he could look at others through the eyes of Jesus. Does that change things? So when you look at a Syrian refugee through the eyes of Jesus, what do you see? Somebody to be afraid of? No. Someone who needs to know the love of God. And when we look at one another, 
When we look at others through the eyes of Jesus, instead of worrying about whether or not we're better looking or dressed appropriately or whatever else, we look at them differently, right? Because how does Jesus look at me? He said, oh, Phil, you got to do something with that face. Yeah. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He looks at me through the eyes of love, wanting what is good, what is best for me. And you see, this is all about following Jesus, becoming like Him. I have begun following Jesus and am depending on the Spirit of Jesus. And yes, I need the Spirit of Jesus because I continually want to fall into my old way of looking at others. And so when that driver cuts you off on the way to church, did you bless him or curse him? <laughs> I start off with a curse and then I end up blessing. <laughs> because I am still learning to be like Jesus, you see. We look at others differently. That co-worker that you don't like, right? How does Jesus look at that co-worker, right? How about that nosy neighbor? How does the Lord look at that nosy neighbor? It changes things, doesn't it? When we learn to look at others through the eyes of Jesus. And you say, oh, pastor, that's hard. Yes, that's why we depend on the spirit of Jesus. This is not natural. No, it isn't. It is supernatural. And we are creatures who've been blessed to live in the presence of the supernatural God. To experience the reality of that God in our lives. Next slide. And I think we're going to quit with, with this slide. Okay? If you really want to hear the rest, I'll do a second part later. <laughs> okay? We all know what uh, sleep apnea is, right? You know what sleep apnea is? Okay? Does it need to be translated into Romanian? No, everybody knows what this is. Sleep apnea is where when you are supposed to be sleeping, you stop breathing. And that's a problem, right? It disturbs your sleep. It might even kill you, right? And so sleep apnea is when you are not breathing regularly, when you stop breathing. And I want to tell you that there is a spiritual counterpart to that. There is spiritual apnea in which God's people stop breathing. Some people, some of God's children only breathe in the morning when they're having devotions, maybe at mealtime, but the rest of the day they forget about God, right? They have stopped breathing, you see. They have stopped uh, having, experiencing the intimacy of that relationship. They have become unaware of God during the course of the day. In fact, even now while I'm speaking, some of you may be absolutely unaware of God because you're so busy listening to me. Mistake. Keep praying. I need the help. <laughs> And so, you know, there are some who only breathe when they come to church on Sunday. Are they in critical condition? They sure are. And some even wait for somebody else to do the breathing for them. So there is no life there. There's no joy. There's no power. And the scripture reminds us to practice the presence of Jesus. To have continual fellowship throughout the day. To pray without ceasing. Do these things sound familiar to you? Yes. Every moment of the day. So when I drove in the hour or so from Elmira, I was talking to the Lord continually. Occasionally I'd say something about a driver. Get out of the way or something. But it was a conversation I had continually with the Lord. This is your privilege and my privilege. Even while the preacher's preaching. Even when you're at work. Even when you're cooking. And especially when you are about to have that family squabble. 
Because when you are breathing regularly, it is awfully hard to be listening to the Lord. And the Lord is saying to you, be kind, be gentle, watch your words, and then to keep spouting out those things which you know are not right. So this is really, really important. And it has to, once again, to do with your living relationship with Jesus. Because it is not a Sunday thing. It is not a morning devotion or evening devotion or a mealtime grace thing. It is an all of life thing in which we are practicing his presence. Look at the verse that's on the screen, John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains, abides in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. How do we remain? How do we abide? It is by practicing His presence. It is by doing the spiritual breathing continually, every moment of every day. I need Thee. Oh, I need Thee. Every hour, every minute, every moment, I need Thee. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us so much. So as those of you who are on this journey and have uh, past uh, the 65 year milestone what's my word to you keep your eye fixed on Jesus you're headed in the right direction keep going keep going and God bless you